I said it at the beginning, I said So nobody is an island of knowledge and everybody has the capacity to communicate errors So we need an audit system that can audit the errors that are communicated E.g. You know, someone comes to say Satisfied is different from medication No! Please ask yourself that Is it important for me to go into a relationship? After I scored in school, I came here to get an education Why don't I just get the education and just before? Bible, I also believe that the best platform to start a point in life is in church. So I don't mean if you're not finished. Okay, no problem, no problem, no problem. I'm very ready and Okay, this is the church. You can see that some of these things also, it will also give. But the day I think it's your time to get. No, I have The question comes directly. Who should? Yes, I, I agree with that. I get that. But he's trying to say that. No, it is, we can't really say. I can say that how the, the way at which entrepreneurs affect the life of the student. One, it promotes the, the, the it promotes the urgency for it, it promotes the urgency. It, it, that is one thing. The second one I can say that it it helps the student to meet to to be independent, to be self-independent. Financially you'll be you'll be up to standard, you'll be able to meet some contingency on your own without uh, without the help of your guidance and your parents. Wow. So you are trying to tell us now that being a student and an entrepreneur helps you to be financially independent. Yes. Is it advisable for students presently, you know, in this generation, to be financially independent? Yes, it is. It is. I will encourage students to be financially independent. If you look at basically, if you look at the situation of this country, if you look at things are not due to the fact that there are instability in our economic system and some other things. So it will be very helpful if you are an entrepreneur, if you are an entrepreneur, that is you have something that you are doing to spend you money, you have something you are doing to generate you money, it will help you so far in your career and your education. So it is very advisable that as a student, you should have something doing, you should be an entrepreneur. Okay. How can students manage their entrepreneurship skills and their academic life? Without one suffering from problem. Well, thank you for that. That's a nice question. You've answered it by managing it. And how do you manage it? Just check your time. Uh, look at the timetable, check your business, then effectively distribute your energy. So you, because you see, there's no such thing as time management. Because anything you manage either increases or decreases. So those time can be managed. What can be managed is your energy. So what you just do is how do I deploy my energy? What percentage of energy do I give to my academics? What percentage of energy do I give to my business? With that, you can easily um, strike a balance between your academics and your entrepreneurial pursuit. Um, let me say the problem leading to this unemployment outside there is lack of entrepreneurial skills. Because most students, they only come to school, they believe, actually, our academics here is our primary objective. But they actually believe, they believe, okay, well, if I don't come to this school, I wouldn't have the opportunity to join any organization on campus. But it's wrong for them to have that kind of notion, that kind of mindset. So because they lack this entrepreneurial skill, that's why they are, they are joining the labor market outside. On that issue, I think what I would say is that I would not encourage students to, to neglect the, the, the primary assignment where they are in the institution, wide, which is to learn and focus on the aspect of making money and some other things. But I would just say this that they should look for a way at which they can balance it or they can balance it up. But I've come to understand that even in the, in the institution, they will never taught you how to make money, which you have to do on your own. There are so many things that you, as a person, you will need to survive with, they will not teach you. But I think that for you to have this case that you want to venture into a business or doing something for yourself, to be self-independent, you just have to look for a way at which you can balance yourself. So I will, I, will, I will think what they need there is just how to manage their time. That is, more. the, the time should now be 50-50. 50, 50, 50 on your education and 50, but you should just look at which you can balance it all. So that one side will not be on the ground, one side should be on okay, the ground. Okay, I'm going to hold it. To hold you to your words right now. You said 50 50. Is it possible to give your academics 50 percent and uh, mm. your entrepreneurship skills 50 percent? I have seen students that ended up losing their academics for fitting their admissions just because they gave it a 50 50 percentage of timing. So, Vicar, can you please? 
Okay, um, first, I, I think we should um, go back to the definition of balance. Okay. I strongly believe that balance does not mean equal proportion. Rather, it means right proportion. E.g., when you want to cook a soup, you don't put the equal amount of Maggi you put, uh, and uh, uh, the, the, the amount of Maggi you put is not the same as the amount of pepper you put. It has to be right proportion. So, um, balancing does not necessarily mean 50 50. It means what percentage should I give? Then there's something I want to take and notice too. Is this? Uh, Miles Moran once said something, the late Miles Moran, he said, when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is in everything. The purpose of entrepreneurial pursuit of a student is not to make money. That's not the purpose. If you are a student or in a business, the purpose is not, for make, is not to make money. The purpose is to learn entrepreneurial skills, to gain experience. You see, I wish my generation would place high priority to experience, the same way we place high priority to academics. So you get to understand, okay, think for example, when I started my business as an audio level student, I started a, a food joint. It, it crumbled within two months. I can't start a business and make that mistake again. What was the mistake I made? I started a business without proper bookkeeping. I could not manage my cash, so I've learned that. So I strongly believe that the purpose of entrepreneurial pursuit for a student is to, to learn the lessons of business. So if you have that mindset, it won't affect your academics because you are not so money conscious, rather, you are knowledge and education conscious. That's education. And uh, Mark Twain once said, my schooling won't affect my education. I, I believe there's a misconception here. You see, while listening to speakers, especially motivational speakers of nowadays, we need to understand two things. One, those who communicate knowledge also communicate error. So nobody is an island of knowledge, and everybody has a capacity to communicate error. So we need an audit system that can audit the errors that have been communicated. E.g., you know, someone comes to say, certificate is different from education. No. Certificate is a form of education. Who have thought? Formal education. Uh, I, I, I think I will, I will still go with that. that certificate and education, they are two different things. Uh, how, sir? You have so many people that have certificates, but they are intellectually low. What's the definition of education, sir? Education is, is the act of studying. You study, you learn. But, but if you look at the system now, the system that we are into now, you have so many people that have this certificate, but if you look at them, uh, psychologically, they are not balanced. They're not okay. Okay, okay so, so let, let me give you this illustration. As, as much as I love your point of view, but I strongly believe that certification is a subset of education. Take this illustration, sir. Certification is like a foundation. And you need to understand that one of the most important aspects of a house is the foundation. But in over two decades I've been on planet Earth, I've never seen families that live on a foundation. Oh, can you call your family members and come on, this is a foundation, let's go live on it. No. But nevertheless, the role of a foundation cannot be taken out. So we can't take certification out of education. Okay, speaker, if, uh, if I tell you, if you have certificate, let me tell you something, if I want to get certificates in just less than six months, I can actually buy a certificate, yes or no, without being educated. You, 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 you're misunderstanding okay, me okay, here. Okay, my, my, my point is this, please we'll let me get this point straight. We'll be right back on the show. Students lack vital information. Although they look well-dressed, our society has a lot to do in securing the confidence of people on campus. But to find ourselves in a situation where the leaders are not ready to listen to the students. Do you want to know how students feel about their life on campus? Do you want to know the challenges faced by students in our institution? Do you want to get vital information on how to overcome these challenges? Then you are watching the right show. This is the Campus Voice Show. this show, we equip you with necessary information about the campuses. We have access to all universities and campuses. We give a platform for you to air your views. You were watching the Campus Voice Show. You are watching the Campus Voice Show. You are, you are watching, watching the, the Campus, Campus Voice, Voice Show. show. Salvaging the students' minds. Um, we've been discussing about the entrepreneurial effect on campus students. And it has been awesome because we have gotten to a point that everyone has to stand for him or herself. Now, my question is this. You see, entrepreneurship is good. It is good to have an entrepreneurship skill. But these days, we find out that the minds of our students have been polluted, have been corrupted. 
you know, these uh, motivational speakers have made our students, you know, believe that they can make money without any an education. Without going to school, you can make this money and, you know, just come out and like that, you are all. But these days, I, I, personally, I don't agree with this. I don't know about any of you, but I don't agree. And I start with correct it. Anybody's correcting me? I, 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 I guess I believe your point. Because, you see, one thing I want us to get here, and I want Ms. Richard and Mr. Amos to get us, is there's a big difference between making money and building business. They are two different things. So the motivational speakers, they've done a successful job in confusing our students about this concept. And you see, the labor market, the outside world is, is there are two kinds of world. We have the ideal world and the real world. What the speakers come to paint to us is the ideal world. The world is not as easy as this. So my advice to people is just take your academic serious, at the same time, developing your entrepreneurial skill. Why? So that by the time you get into the labor market, you can be an employee at the same time in the background building your business. Please take this. Nine out of every ten businesses fail. Out of the one that survive, 90% of the 100%, out of 100%, also fails again within 10 years. So you are telling me that you want to abandon your academics to pursue a business? You are, you are, you are abandoning a known word? It, it, it's pure, it's pure. It's pure foolishness. Right. Me the word. Me the word. Uh, uh, okay. Sorry, Miss Rachel said something. She said she she can afford to buy a certificate within six months. She said she can afford to buy a certificate within six months. But you know, having an entrepreneurship skill will enable her go far beyond six months. Do you agree with that? I, sorry, sir, I have an advice for her. Do you know we are not in the performance economy? Whereby when you get to the work, most of the works today in the banking industry, 70% of the work are on contracts. It's about your performance. So I don't know how the certificate you bought will enhance your performance in the workplace. Okay, what I'm going to say to all this is that um, to students, if if some motivational speakers are just saying some things that they are just motivating you, it's their own ability to decide on their own. What I'm, I was actually saying about the certificate and the education part is that okay, I'm not in line with my what I'm doing is not in line with my mathematics department. So what I'm just trying to say is that the certificate I can actually buy certificate without being educated. So, a first class student in mathematics can go outside there. Did you know some of them read to pass? So, now tell me, are you telling me that a mathematics student, the entrepreneurial skills, you know, you have the entrepreneurial skills, you don't have the entrepreneurial skills. That's why I said you must be educated, not just about the certificate there. If you say that a motivation speaker is coming here to motivate people, and then they are aside, they are not doing, they are not going along with their um, department stuff. Let me tell you something. If they are not, they must do with their department, they must do the same thing. They must try to balance up their equation. So now you mean so you agree I'm, that certification is also important? Is that what, is that what, what I'm actually saying? That if the certificate is important, it's not, it's not that what, what, what's the purpose important of the certificate? Ms. Ms. Rachel, what, what's the purpose of the certificate? The purpose of the certificate? Yes. Is you being certified in that way? Why should you be certified? Why should you be certified in that uh, I, I believe. Sorry, sorry, sorry Mr. Ipen. Let's you were saying something that when you are talking about certificates, now we are talking about entrepreneur here. Yeah. We are talking about having a certificate and working in bank. Now we are talking about entrepreneur. This is you having your business of your own. Try to tell you why, sir. Try to tell you why, sir. Try to tell you why, sir. So one one of the most complicated things to do on earth is to build a business. Out of every 10 businesses, out of every 10, get us, sir. Nine fields. It is not an easy thing to build a business. So the most advisable thing is can you get a job and in the background? Build your business. Because what if your business fails? How will you survive? And you've not played a key role in acquiring a good certificate. Wow, wow, wow. I'm loving this uh, this argument, this you know controversy. As an entrepreneur, there is a there is a favorite quote of mine which says that no risks, no change, no future. So we are talking about entrepreneurial, it's just all about taking risks. And whatsoever risks you are taking, when you are into entrepreneur, you must give way to be what be flexible. Be able to change when the world is changing you change along but you must remember that the fact remains that you have to be ready to take risks when you take risks there will be changes and then you have future so that is just what i have to say all right okay as a student the, uh, just the advice i'll give to students is that the best time to plant the tree is 20 years ago and the second best time is now so if they want to do anything pertaining to entrepreneurship they should start now because in the nearest future the world is um, developing about my last one is this, um, please reduce your risks by having two plans. Have your certificate and have a business at the background. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Uh, students out there, we've heard from our speakers, and I'm just going to chip in this one word. 
you are the only one that can use your ability. It is an awesome responsibility. Well, it's good to have a certificate, it's good to face your education alongside gain an entrepreneurship skill. And one must not suffer for the other. Once again, my speakers, thank you for coming today. We really appreciate you. And for more information, follow us on this show on our Facebook page, written on your screen. Call the numbers written on your screen. We'll be glad to have you and answer your questions. So we'll come your way next time. I remain your presenter, Frida, and your show, Campus Voice.